guys! So today I am here to talk to you guys about my favorite books of 2016. I read so many amazing books in 2016 that it was really hard to narrow down this list, but I think I did it and I have five favorite books of the year. These were the books that among the ones that I loved, these stood out so much. I have been thinking about them since I read them. But before I get into my top five favorites, I wanted to share some honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is a poetry collection, which is called Salt by Nayira Wahid. And this is a really beautiful collection about identity and race and gender and it's so beautiful. It's one of the most amazing poetry collections that I have ever read and it's now kind of set the standard for the ones that I have been reading and nothing so far has even come close to touching salt. Another honorable mention is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I just read this uh, a week or two ago. I listened to the audiobook which is narrated by Lin-Manuel Miranda who is the creator of Hamilton and that amped up my enjoyment of the audiobook because I really love him. But also the story was just so beautiful. It is about two Mexican-American boys who develop a friendship and through that friendship they discover and come to terms with their own sexual identities and it's just so beautiful. The friendship to romance development was just so beautifully done. I can definitely see myself rereading this in the future. And then my last honorable mention is If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. And this book is about a trans teen and she um, at the beginning of the story is starting a new school and basically she's starting over in a place where nobody knows that she's trans and it's all about her learning to accept that part of her identity and falling in love. There's a really beautiful romance in this story. Okay, now for my top picks of the year. First we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a space opera about the crew on a ship called the Wayfarer and basically their job is to travel through space and punch holes so people can travel through them and it makes travel a lot faster. But this book isn't really about space. It's more of an exploration of gender, race, sexuality and it's so beautifully done. I have never read a book that expressed what it is to be a person as well as I did in this book. There's so many different relationships between all the characters and they're all so wonderfully explored. There was a relationship in this book between two of the female characters that I just, it warmed my heart so much. I just love this book so much. I cannot wait to read the sequel. I already have an arc of it, but I'm kind of putting it off because I just, I want to hold on to this for a little longer. The next one was an obvious pick for favorite, and that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I don't think it's any secret at this point that I really love Nicola Yoon. I loved her debut novel, Everything Everything, but this one blows everything everything out of the water. This book was so amazing. I can't even begin to explain it. I've mentioned many times on my channel that I'm not really a fan of YA contemporary romance and that's what this was. But for some reason, Nicola Yoon has this way of writing where she can make these young adult romances feel so real. This is an own voices book about two teens in New York City. One of them, Natasha, at the start of the novel, she finds out that her and her family are about to be deported to Jamaica. And then the other main character, Daniel, is an American Korean boy who is struggling with the expectations his family has on him of, you know, going to a really nice college and becoming this person that he doesn't really want to be. And so in this novel, both of the characters meet and they spend a day together and in the course of that day, it really changes their entire lives. And something that I found so wonderful about this book is the attention to detail Nicola took when it came to side characters. There would be these random chapters in the middle where we kind of got like a snapshot into the life of someone whose paths these two main characters crossed, whether it was a doorman or a waitress or a driver on the street, we would get these little snapshots and it kind of just showed how everyone's lives weave in and out of each other's and there's all these choices that we make that lead us to 
extremely important moments in our lives and how a seemingly small decision could completely take your life on a whole nother course. I just, I highly recommend this book if you are a fan of contemporary romance or even if you're not a fan of contemporary romance, I think this is one that you definitely don't wanna miss out on. So the next one I'm going to talk about is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. I absolutely loved this book. Basically the setup is that there's three characters in this book. One of them is named Alex and three years prior to the book her, her sister was raped and murdered and her rapist has just been let free. Her story in this book is kind of a revenge story. She wants to avenge her sister's death. The second character is Jack and he kind of in this book represents the male gaze. And then the third main character is PK and she is the preacher's daughter. And what I really loved about this book was how much it talked about rape culture. I thought it explored the topic of rape so well. It's very tough to get through, obviously, because it's dealing with very difficult topics, but I think that it is definitely a very wonderful and necessary story. The next one is Ash by Melinda Lowe. This is a lesbian Cinderella retelling that is just the most wonderful story I have ever read. It's so, so beautiful and it is the type of fairy tale that I would have killed to have as a kid. It follows Ash, who is uh, the Cinderella in this story. In this world, there are Fae, and Ash desperately wants to run away to the woods where the Fae reside, but for certain reasons, she has to wait until she is ready to enter the woods of the Fae. And in that time that she's waiting, she meets Keza, who is the royal huntress, and they develop a romance that is just so so beautiful. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about this except it's really lovely and wonderful and you should read it. And the last book on my favorites list might be my favorite out of all of them, but I haven't, I don't want to commit to that. And that is Every Heart of Doorway by Shannon McGuire. I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel and I just love, I love, I love this book. I've read it three times now. <laughs> this book is about a boarding school that is basically a refuge for children who have somehow found their way into a magical world and then were forced to come back to our world and they're very upset about that. Obviously, like, if I went to Narnia and then I came back here, I would be pissed as hell. I want to stay in Narnia. That's basically how these kids are feeling. They went to this really great world and then they somehow came back here and they're stuck. And so they go to this school because they can't really function in the real world now. And it's just, it's so beautiful. The main character is asexual and there is a trans side character. And then there's also a kind of murder mystery aspect to this book. I just thought it was so beautiful. The writing is gorgeous. It has this very like, whimsical but also dark feel to it. I mean, it's a pretty dark book. I've read it three times already. I feel like that speaks for itself because I do not reread books often. So those were my favorite books of 2016. Let me know what your favorite book was and stay tuned because soon I will be sharing with you guys my least favorite books of 2016. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!